to go west found overnight riches. Many found instead a grim struggle for existence and were lost by the wayside. One of these unfortunates was saved from a life of crime by the help of Rex Allen, who stars as the frontier doctor. Following the panic of 1893, unable to find work in eastern cities, countless families migrated west. They were easy prey for land speculators who sold them worthless farms, many without water. When drought came, these families were destitute. One such family was the Matthews, who migrated from Chicago and whom I did my best to help. What are you doing? Leave it there. I said leave it there. What's going on here? Lousy Eastern kid. I was just doing what I was told, and this kid came running out of the house and tried to tear down this sign. All right, put your gun away. Come on, Mike. I saw the fight. Why was he putting up that sign? I'll kill anyone who tries to kick us out while Mama's sick. Don't worry about it, Sally. I'll take care of it. I got your message. Is your mother in the bedroom? Yes, she is. Matthews, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. Oh, it's the doctor. Oh, I'm just fine. She had trouble focusing and recognizing me just then. Does she have the same problem with everybody else? Yes, doctor. Still complaining about those severe headaches? Yes, she is. Pulse rate's very rapid. Here's some sedative pills. I want her to have one of these every two hours in a glass of water. Now you try to get some rest, Mother Matthews, and I'll be back to see you again real soon. Oh, yes, Doctor. Yeah. I'm afraid I have bad news for you. We better sit down. What is it, Dr. Baxter? You've known for a long time that your mother's suffering from these violent headaches. They're due to a tumor that's pressing on her brain. The symptoms she has now, loss of memory, double vision, and rapid pulse, indicate that the pressure's increasing. She's gonna have to have an operation. Mother of mercy. And she must go to a specialist, a brain surgeon. There's a good one in San Francisco, and he's a friend of mine. I'll send him a telegram right away. And meanwhile... Oh, wait. What's this talk about surgeons and, and, and operations? We have no money. Mike's right. We haven't even been able to pay you for all you've done for Mother. Don't worry about that. I'll tell you why we can't pay. It's because we were tricked into buying this worthless farm that earns us nothing. Shh. All right, forget about that. But I'm strong. I can work, and I want to work. Why can't I find work, Doctor? The drought's been rough on everybody, Mike. You know that. There's another reason I can't find work, Doctor. It's because we're Easterners. They hate us. To my face, I've been called dirty Eastern trash. Yes, I know there are people in the Valley who talk like that, but... Time will change their minds, Mike. 
How much time, Doctor? Mike, please. Don't shout at the doctor. It's not his fault. All right, Sally. Your mother still has to see a specialist. But before she can make the trip, she'll have to be built up physically. We'll do what we can. I'll pay something towards your taxes and your mortgage, and, and I'll be back to see your mother real soon. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. And thank you. And try not to worry. What do we do? Sell the furniture. Maybe, maybe the horse and buckboard. Money. $3. Will it always be like this, that the doc will be paying something toward the mortgage and giving us the money for the food we need? What are you doing? We're not taking charity anymore. I'll get the food Mama needs. Where are you going? Mike! Well, Doc, what you doing out here? No sick folks in these parts? Can you spare a minute, please? Why, sure. What's the trouble? The young fella in town, I'd sort of like to help out. He's father died about a year ago, and his mother's pretty sick. Thought maybe you might be able to use him here on the ranch. What's his name? Name's Mike. Mike Matthews. One of those eastern nesters, huh? Sorry, Doc, it's not my policy to hire him. Not that I've got anything personal against him, you understand? I see. I'm in kind of a spot myself on account of the drought. Had to lay off a few of my regular hands. You didn't let me finish, Cleet. What I meant was for you to hire the boy and for me to pay his salary. Is that a deal? You pay his salary? Why, how can I lose? Sure, it's a deal. There's just one thing I want understood, Cleet. I don't want the boy to know I'm paying his salary. All right with me. Thanks a lot, Cleet. Guess I'm the one should thank you, Doc. Getting me an extra ranch hand for nothing. So long. So long. Get up, Duke. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Barone? Sheriff, I want you to arrest this boy. I caught him trying to pull what off happened? the... Well, Doc, I was just telling the sheriff, I caught this boy red-handed on my grazing land trying to steal a calf. Is that true, Mike? Yes. Mike, the man you stole from, was about to give you a job. But you mean... So this is the boy. Well, it's a good thing I didn't hire him. There's no room on my ranch for sneaking, thieving eastern trash. Don't you call me Eastern Trash, you understand? I'll call you anything I want to. I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Take it easy, Cleet. Take it easy. Jim! Jim! Come in here. Yes, Sheriff? Lock him up. He's upset, Sheriff. He didn't know what he was doing. His mother's been sick. He must have been stealing for her. His mother's been sick? Is that why he attacked me? Stealing cattle carries a stiff penalty. $150 and 30 days in jail. Well, you can't do that to the boy. Book him, Sheriff. 
I'm pressing charges. In that case, I'm going to ask that he get a jury trial. I think there's extenuating circumstances in this case, and I think somebody should know about it. How soon can the case come to trial? Well, there's a circuit court meeting over in Elkton. If it's agreeable to you gentlemen, I'll put him on the docket tomorrow. Suits me fine. How about you, Doc? I'll be there. All right, I'll have the boy taken to Elkin the first thing in the morning. Doc, I... I... Don't worry about it, son. I'll break it to the family as easy as I can. You ought to be proud of yourself, boy. Early the next morning, Mike left the jail for the trip to Elton. Tell you what, I'll make you a bet. I'll bet you you get the full sentence for stealing. That's a hundred and fifty dollar fine and thirty days in jail. No. That ain't all. He'll get you for assault and battery charge, too. For beating up on Cleet. That's another $300 fine and 60 days in jail. But the doctor will explain. My mother's sick. She needs me at home. Yeah, we'll cut no ice with this here judge. You know what he'll say? Same as I would. Should have thought of that for your stove. Uh, you're a murderer, Mike. Just as sure as you're sitting there, you're going to be convicted. Your mother won't be able to stand that. Sick as she is, she'll die. Yeah, you're a murderer. that Mike had started on the road to crime and was sending money to his sister and mother. Take it, doctor, and give it back to the people that Mike stole it from. I'll do my best, Sally. How does he get the money to you? I see him occasionally. Then you know where he is? Sometimes. Sometimes not. She's in bad shape, Sally. She must have that operation, but she's too weak. She's not even trying. Yes, I know, Doctor. But the food I brought for her. She won't eat. She doesn't care. Since she found out that Mike's a bandit, she says she doesn't want to live. And my hands are tied. Take care of her, Sally, and if she gets anywhere, send for me. I'll go directly home after I deliver this money to the sheriff. In the meantime, try to get her to change her mind. Sure, wasn't positively identified. But Cleet's madder than a bull. Threatens to get my neck. Well, you're doing the best you can. Yeah, but the boy's learned fast. He's uh, slippery as a mountain lion. I came in to give you this. Some money Mike gave his folks. They don't want any part of it. How'd he get it to them? He's been seeing his sister. Oh, then she must know where Mike's hiding out. I could bring her in and question her. She's his sister, remember? And she's made out of pretty strong stuff. I don't think it'll do you any good. Ah. Uh, I guess you're right, Doc. The safest place for Mike, for himself and everybody concerned, is behind bars. If I can do anything to help you, why, let me know. Thanks. <laughs>
Still talking it up for that lousy Eastern boy, Doc? I only want to see justice done, Cleep. Exactly what we're going to tell the sheriff, right, men? Dr. Baxter, I've been looking all over town for you. What is it, Sally? Mama's much worse. Get in. Mother Matthew's life ebbed away. A stormy argument was nearing its end in the sheriff's office. I'm tired of arguing, Sheriff. Are you going to deputize us or aren't you? All right, Cleet. You've got me cornered. If I don't, you'll go gunning for the boy anyway, and I haven't got enough men to stop you. You men are all deputized. All right. Let's get over to the Matthews shack. Well, all you'll find there is a young girl and a sick old woman. That's right. And I bet you both of them can tell us where the boy's hiding out. You coming, Sheriff? Yes. I may at least be able to keep you from roughing them up. Courage, my daughter. I'll make the funeral arrangements, Doctor. Thank you, Father. You couldn't find Mike? I found him. He was afraid of a trap. <laughs> Don't go in there. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, I'm almost dead. Mike's horse staked out in the woods. He's around here and we're gonna get him. His mother just passed away. Give him a few minutes alone with her. Give him time to figure out how to blast his way out past us, not in your life. Wait a minute, let me talk to him. Maybe I can convince him to give himself up. Give the doctor a chance. All right. Sheriff, take some men and surround the house. Jim, Ed, come with me. Now you got two minutes. If he's not out then, we're coming in shooting. the living room. Maybe so, but some of them, they'll be dead too. Listen to me, Mike. Your decision to live by the gun killed your mother. It brought misery to your sister and unhappiness to everyone around you. Now stop it. Give yourself up. Oh, no, Doc. I've broken the law too many times. Not that I wanted to, but it ran me crazy to see Mom and Sally starving. They think I killed Deputy Trench. Well, didn't you? No. What happened? We fought, fell out of the coach. He hit his head on the wheel and, and broke his neck. But I'm Eastern trash, Doc. They won't take my word for it. They'll hang me. I'll try to get the court to believe you, Mike, if you'll give yourself up. Time's up, Doc. We're coming in. Don't pull that trigger. Please! Please! No! Get out of the way, Doc. He's got a gun. I need more time. Shut the door. I said he's got a gun. I said shut the door. I'll shoot you, Doc. I swear it, unless you move. No! You've done your work, Cleet. Now get out of here. 
Get the medical bag, Sheriff. Yeah, sure, Doc. Oh. I saved Mike to face a judge and jury who refused to believe his story of the killing and who sentenced him to hang by the neck until he was dead. I had but one more avenue of appeal, the governor. Amen. Is that all, my son? Yes, Father. The killing of the deputy, you still say it was accidental. Tell me the truth, Mike, so that I may grant you absolution. What you say is between you and God. I cannot break the secrecy of the confessional. Is the doctor the only one who believes me? It was accidental. I believe you. I was wrong to become a bandit, Father. I know that now, but, but tell me, why couldn't I find work? Why were we so poor that I had to steal food from my mother? Why was I always called a nester and, and dirty eastern trash? At the trial, why wouldn't they believe me? If I knew some of the answers, maybe I could die a little more happy. If there were answers, maybe I wouldn't have to go to the gallows. There is but one answer to all your questions, Mike. Trust in the wisdom of God. Prepare yourself. Time, Mike. I have one more question, Father. What's going to become of Sally? The doctor's arranged to take care of her. I'm ready, Warden. So young. So very young. I know. This document is from the governor. Because of extenuating circumstances brought to his attention by Dr. Bill Baxter, he has seen fit to order for Michael Matthews a new trial. Maybe I was wrong, the Sheriff. Maybe I was wrong. It was a different story at the second trial. Mike was exonerated of murder, but pleaded guilty to his other lawless acts. The judge sentenced him to a year in jail and fined him $1,000 for the damage he'd done, then put him on parole to Sheriff Santo. Mike somehow was to work out his fine. Hagen? Yes. You see, I thought that I would stand a better chance of getting work back east so that I could help Mike pay his fine. Is that the only reason, Sally? Yes. You know, the West belongs to you as much as anyone. Probably even a little more. Both your folks are buried here. You suppose you could talk her into staying if maybe I could find her a job? You bet I could. Let's see what we can do about it. Mike, I've been doing a lot of thinking since your second trial. That one proved I was all wrong. I'd like to try and make it up to you. 
You can't leave here because you're on parole. But you can put your time to use by building up your farm. I'd like to stake you to a few head of cattle for a starter. You can pay me back later. Sally, how about coming over and cooking for my ranch hands? Won't pay much, but enough to get by on. And it means you can stay here together. How about it, Sally? Through Cleet's help, Mike became a successful rancher. Not long after, Sally became the bride of one of Rising Springs' leading citizens. That was a day I'll never forget.